guys. Uh, today I want to look at a technique for solving quadratic equations called um, completing the square. Uh, so let's start by just going back to square roots and solving by square roots. If I had an expression like this and I wanted to solve it, let's just get the variable by itself. So first thing stopping me from getting to that x is that square, so we know we eliminate squares by taking the square root. So we'll take square root of both sides. Square root of a square leaves me the radicand. All right, and we're going to be equal to uh, square root of 5 on the right-hand side. Don't forget your plus or minus on that. And then we solve. Subtract 3. So we get negative 3 plus or minus square root of 5. Pretty easy to solve that by square roots. So if we can get a quadratic into this form, then it should be easy to solve. So if we had a quadratic such as this one, x squared plus 6x plus 9 um, equals 5, if I was to try to factor it, because that's what this looks like, factored form. If I was to try to factor it, x squared is x times x, 9 is 3 times 3, and we can see that we actually have the problem we just worked, x plus 3 quantity squared equals 5, and you just go on through and solve. Now this is a specific type of quadratic called a perfect square trinomial. So a perfect square trinomial is a quadratic trinomial that ends up being a, uh, when you factor it, it factors into the um, square of its linear binomial. So, so both factors end up being identical, so it's the square of its linear binomial, that's a perfect square trinomial. So all perfect square trinomials we can factor and solve by factoring without them actually equaling zero. Because they'll factor down into identical binomials, then we say it's squared, we take square root of both sides, and we solve. Now what completing the square does is takes any expression, any quadratic equation, and allows us to rewrite it as a perfect square trinomial. That's the completing the square portion. We're going to make it into a perfect square trinomial. So let's first look and see what's the relationship, what between these uh, coefficients and constants that is going to make us be able to actually factor. Well, when we factor, we know that we break down the last term, if we've got a lead coefficient of 1, break down the last term into factors that add to give us the middle term. So it needs to multiply to give us the last, it needs to add to give us the middle. Well, if it's the exact same term, say we're looking at it in terms of b and c, c needs to factor into two numbers that add to give us b, right? So they add to give us b and multiply to give us c. So what it ends up being is half of b. Let's see how we broke into 3 plus 3. If this was a 10, it'd be 5 plus 5. If it was a 40, it'd have to be 20 plus 20. It's got to be half of this middle number because there's two of them to add up. So half of b, but it's still got to multiply by itself to give us the actual c. So this last number, the constant, has to always be b over 2 squared to have a perfect square trinomial. If I had x squared plus 8x, we know that this last number would have to be 16. Half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16 because 16 is 4 and 4, and those are what we'll add to give us 8. If I had x squared plus I don't know, 50x. Half of 50, so it's got to be 25 and 25, so we'll add and it's 625. That's 25 squared. <clears throat> so as you go through, you can see that it doesn't matter what the b is, if the c is always half of that number squared, we know that we're going to be dealing with a perfect square trinomial. And that's the concept the, the really key fact that we want to focus on when we are trying to complete the square. Uh, give me a second and I'll get you the steps for completing the square written up here on the board. So guys, here we go. Here are the steps for completing the square, or solving by completing the square. First thing we want to do is isolate the constant. I want to be left with my square term and my linear term on one side. My ax squared plus bx on one side. Let's dump that constant on the other side so we can focus on getting that perfect square trinomial. 
Next, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the lead coefficient. This is not always a mandatory step. Um, if you, as you work more with these and get more comfortable with them, you can start creating the, the perfect square trinomials, the ones that factor into the identical linear binomials without doing this. But I would say for now, until you get comfortable with it, uh, steps two and three need to be done just like this. So divide both sides of the equation by the lead coefficient. That gets us a 1x squared uh, as our focus, as our first term. Uh, then we'll add b over 2 squared to both sides of the equation. So we are going to focus on trying to get that c that is going to make us a perfect square trinomial like we had just talked before. From there, factor the newly formed perfect square trinomial, um, write it as a squared linear binomial, and then we solve by taking square roots. And remember, don't forget your uh, plus or minus when you take square of both sides. Because if you don't, you're only going to get one solution, and we all know quadratics are going to have to have two solutions to them. All right, so let's look at this example here. Solve by completing the square x squared plus 10x plus 10 equals 0. So my first step is isolate the constant. Let's move that constant to the other side. So I'm going to subtract the 10 over. So I get x squared plus 10x equals negative 10. I'm going to leave a little space in there leave a little space in there so I can write my next step in. Okay, uh, Divide both sides by the lead coefficient. Well, we already have lead coefficient of 1, so that step's taken care of. I don't need to divide by 1. All right, so let's move to step 3. Add b over 2 squared to both sides. So my b is 10, so I'm going to add 10 over 2 squared to both sides. Two rules of math. The things that are like go together, and if you're going to do something to one side of an equation, you got to do it to the other side of the equation. You've got to keep those balanced. So if I'm going to increase this side by the, by the C that will allow me to complete the square, I've got to balance out the other side by adding that same amount on. <laughs> now we just clean it up and factor. So x squared plus 10x plus 10 over 2 is 5, 5 squared is 25, factor that down, x squared is x and x, 25 is 5 times 5, so that they had to give us 10. The more you do with those, this is just our check to make sure we've done things, uh, but you'll get to where you'll just jump straight from here to here, uh, may even jump straight from here to here, but you'll, get, you'll see that as you work with and become more comfortable with it. Uh, on the other side, negative 10 and 25 is 15. And we just finish by taking square roots and isolating our variable. Square root both sides. So x plus 5 equals plus or minus square root of 15. Don't forget that plus or minus. Move your 5. So we get x equals negative 5 plus or minus square root of 15. Remember, you cannot combine uh, non square root with square root. Even if you could, it wouldn't change what was underneath the square root. And we'll see more about why that is when we get into um, our unit on radicals. So that's the solution. X equals negative 5 plus or minus square root of 15. If I was to go back in and plug it in here and here with the positive square root of 15, um, it would give me 0 and then do the negative 5 with minus square root of 15. It would also give me 0. So we can always go back and check these. Uh, those are the steps. Give me a second. I'll get a few more examples up here for y'all to be able to work. Okay, guys, here we have two examples. I want you to pause the video uh, for a few moments and try to work each of these out by yourself. Solve, uh, we solve by completing the square. Uh, just quickly notice lead coefficient. Uh, there's an actual number on front of those x squared, so you'll have to do that um, second step. But try it out, see how you do, and I'll wait right here. Okay, hopefully you were able to get the solutions. Let's go through and let's check your work. Uh, step one is isolate the constant. So I want to get my variables on one side, constant on the other. So I'm going to start by moving my 6 over and my 3x over. So on the left side, 2x squared minus 3x. On the right side, I have negative 4. Let's leave a little room here. Oh, we won't really do it yet. 
Uh, next step, divide by the lead coefficient. So everything gets divided by 2. So x squared minus 3 halves x equals negative 2. Now I'll leave a little space. So 3. Now we're going to add b over 2 squared to both sides. Even though b is a fraction, b can be anything. We can use it to solve any quadratic. So even if b is a fraction, I just do negative 3 over 2 over 2 squared. So negative 3 halves over 2 we know is negative 3 fourths. And we're divided by 2 is multiplying by its reciprocal, which is 1 half. Negative 3 halves times 1 half is negative 3 fourths. Uh, now we can clean it up. We'll jump to the factor in yet. x squared minus 3 halves x. And that's going to be plus 9 sixteenths. 3 fourths squared is 9 sixteenths. Uh, minus 2 plus 9 sixteenths. Now we should be able to factor it. Uh, so x squared is x and x. That's going to be minus 3 fourths. Correct? 9 over 16 is 3 over 4 times 3 over 4. It's negative because the middle one's negative. And then 3 fourths plus 3 fourths is 6 fourths, which is 3 halves. So, again, we can just check and make sure we've done our arithmetic correctly, which we have. Uh, on the right side, uh, negative 32 sixteenths plus 9 sixteenths is negative 23 sixteenths. So we have x minus 3 fourths quantity squared equals negative 23 over 16. Let's pull it up here for a second. We know next step is to solve by square roots. So x minus 3 fourths equals plus or minus square root. And go ahead and separate that. Negative 23 over 16. So that's going to be I square root of 23. 23 I can't break down anymore, but the negative I can take square root of negative 1. It gives me the I. Square root of 16 is 4. And we just finish by adding 3 fourths to both sides. Luckily we have a common denominator. You don't have to have one on these, but this one we have a common denominator. And um, you're going to get 3 plus or minus i squared of 23 all over 4. This numerator plus or minus this numerator all over our common denominator. So we just recombine that back together. Make sure it's a 16. So that's what you should have got for the first one. Let's look at the second one now. It was a little bit different as you noticed when you were working through it. Give us plenty of room to work. Now we'll go ahead and dump that one. Start by isolating our constant. So I'm going to add the 2x squared back over. Now we'll just stick with it. Um, next, we divide by the lead coefficient, which is 2. So x squared plus 1 half x. Again, we've got a fraction for b, and that doesn't mean anything to us. We we'll still go through the same process. We're going to add b over 2 squared. Half of a half is a fourth. So x squared plus 1 half x plus 1 fourth is equal to 3 plus 1 fourth. Sorry, 1 fourth squared, which is 1 16th. Go through, factor that into one fourth and one fourth. Uh, three and one sixteenth is forty-eight forty-nine sixteenths. We'll pull it over here for a minute. X plus one fourth quantity squared equals forty-nine over sixteen. We know we take square root now. 
So x plus 1 fourth equals plus or minus square root of 49 over square root of 16. So plus or minus 7 over 4. And then we just isolate our variable. We'll get the x by itself. Move the 1 fourth by subtracting it. Okay. This is not, I can't do 7 minus 1 and say it's 6 fourths. It's not plus or minus 6 fourths. It's a negative 1 fourth added to a 7 fourths and a negative 1 fourth um, that's with a negative 7 fourths being subtracted from or added to a negative 7 fourths. So I want to just take the time and write it negative 1 plus or minus 7 over 4. Like we did uh, on example number 2 there, Common denominators, put those denominators, keep the denominator say, combine the numerator. Now that we don't have any square roots left, we can see that this one we can actually evaluate. 1 plus 7 over 4, which is 6 over 4, or 3 halves. And 1 minus, sorry, negative 1 minus 7 over 4, which is negative 8 over 4, or negative 2. Sometimes we don't have to leave it with that square root in there because the square root actually completely uh, cancels out. We end up getting perfect squares sometimes. So as I said before, this doesn't just work when we have something that won't factor. Um, this one actually would have factored originally and would have given us these two factors. Um, take a second look at those and see if you can figure out what the original factors would have been just by looking at those solutions. It's kind of a an interesting little thing to look at, but we can also solve, uh, you just completing the square to solve any type, whether they would have factored, whether they wouldn't have factored, um, whether they're imaginary, whether they're real, it doesn't matter. Completing the square takes care of every type of quadratic there is. One more type of quadratic I want you guys to work on before you look at the next lecture And what I want you to do is solve this one. Using completing the square. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Uh, take a little while, solve this one using completing the square, and um, then go check out the next video that you've got uh, to watch for tonight. Uh, or that you know, you've got to watch for class tomorrow. Um, I guess I'll see you in a little while when you start up the next video.